Cool. All right. Well, I am um, filling in for Katie. She uh, she couldn't do this one, so we're thrilled to do it. I'm the CEO of uh, Shorecraft Beer and OceanCity.com, and we're thrilled to be having you come to Ocean's Calling in Ocean City. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're stoked to be there. I think we yeah. missed it the first time, right? And then this will be the second time we're trying. Yeah, exactly. So last week, a storm came through and uh, they 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 postponed the setup a bit. So they're a little under the gun on the setup, but uh, it looks like it's it's coming along quickly. The big stage is up. So your stage is already in place. We're all set for you. <laughs> Perfect. So so I sent you some questions. Um, the first section is really background. We're going to try to sort of go through this rather quickly. Uh, we're really excited to have you and we want you to tell us who you are and where you're from. Just a little background. Uh, my name is Jared Watson. I am one of the singers and songwriters from a band called Dirty Heads, originated in Huntington Beach, California. Uh, we met in high school, started playing in Dustin's garage uh, and realized that we had a lot in common musically. And personality wise, you know, we became best friends. And then uh, he was already in a band and I had no musical background. Um, so I just kind of figured this is something fun to do. I really like the guy. I keep hanging out. This is super fun. And then it just kind of snowballed. And like, you know, we kept writing songs and having fun. And then that made me realize that I really liked doing it. And then we started playing shows and started getting a following. And the next thing you know, like a couple of years later, we're signed to Warner Brothers. So it was called all, all really, really quick and not something that I saw um, in my future when I was growing up. And now uh, I'm very grateful. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that I feel like I found my purpose. Well, that's really exciting. I see that in some of your music, and I was listening to some of your songs today. So we'll we'll get to those. You're performing this Sunday, right? From five fifteen to six fifteen. Yeah. So the Seabright stage is the big one at the Ocean's Calling Festival. Did you know that the concert is almost totally sold out? I did not, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> and so you didn't anticipate that necessarily. Have you been to Ocean City, Maryland before? Yeah, yeah, we've played there numerous times before. And where did you play in Ocean City? I could have, I, no idea, okay. no idea. <laughs> Probably Secrets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, we've definitely played Secrets a bunch, but. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. What did you, what did you like most about Ocean City? I'd, I've never seen outside of the parking lot of Secrets, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, there's probably a lot to see that you might enjoy. <laughs> there's some really good yeah, well, restaurants I mean, now too it looks a lot more like california yeah we're just, you know we're on tour so it's like you gotta you gotta get in get out where are you right now i'm at home in costa mesa california okay cool and when do you head east uh we're gonna go out on saturday the day before yeah wow gotcha gotcha so katie posted to the oceans calling facebook page to ask what fans wanted to know about you and the the answers that came back, the questions they want answered are who and what influenced your music? It's the first one. Um, right off the bat, I, I think the two the two main ones uh, would be Sublime and Beastie Boys. Um, there was a ton, a ton, a ton of really, you know, kind of old school reggae from the 60s and 70s and 80s that we were into. And that definitely, definitely, you can hear that in our, in our music. But I think at the time, Sublime and the Dirty, and, and Dirty Heads and the Beastie Boys were the only two acts that we knew of that we were listening to that were kind of mashing up all these genres and, and taking all this different type of music and blending it together, but making it sound good, making it sound like one original band, you know? Uh, and we knew then that if we liked reggae and we liked hip hop and we liked folk and we liked jazz and we liked classic rock, we could take, we could take it from anywhere and we could put it in our music. Um, I think those two bands really opened our eyes to the fact that you don't just have to play one style of music, but it's tricky to do because it could be very confusing. Um, and I really like the fact that they're so original 
that when you hear a Beastie Boys song, you know it's a Beastie Boys song. Whether it's like one of their punk songs or one of their funk songs or instrumental or it's their regular hip hop stuff, you know it's them. When you hear a Sublime song, whether it's more of a reggae song or a grimy punk song, or he's putting a lot more hip hop into the production back then, you knew it was a Sublime song. And I'm really proud that we're able to do that, that I, I don't think there's anybody playing music right now that sounds like the Dirty Heads. Um, I don't think there ever will be. And I'm really proud of that, you know, and we can take a lot of different style of music and, and make it our own and uh, and and still be original in 2023. You know, it's it's kind of hard to be original at this point. In time. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. The next question that they wanted to know is what is the best advice somebody ever gave you and who was that person to you? The best advice. <clears throat> well, I think. This is in no way is this conceited at all, but I think after a really long time, I don't want to just do a cliche one and like go off like some quote. Right. Um, there was one, <laughs> one, there's one that my manager told me a long time ago that really, really works, but it's still not my favorite one. And it's get all the information first. And when you do get all the information first, it makes things a lot easier. Don't assume anything until you have all the information. Don't worry about it. Just don't even think about it until you have every single piece of information about whatever it is. And then you can decide on whether you should freak out with or not. That one's great. But it dawned on me one day because I was, you know, an 18 year old kid. I was a 25 year old kid. I, you know, I'm 30, whatever. I'm in the industry. There's all these, you know, could be mentors around me. There's all these other um, really successful musicians uh, and when I was younger, I found myself like most people, I feel like, well, when they look back that I thought I knew everything. And there was a lot of advice given to me that I probably didn't take. And then a little bit later on, I remember giving myself advice going, man, the best probably advice is to actually take advice. <laughs> I feel like 90% of the time somebody gives you advice it goes in one ear and right out the other. And you don't even, you, you don't even think about it. This is unsolicited. I don't want to hear what you have to say. You're old. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're, you're in a band. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not even, you know, there's always an excuse to not listen to, to the advice or the advice is such a solution to your problem, but it's not the easy way out. It might be the hard way out that you don't want to listen to it. Um, so I honestly, if there's any, what I think the best advice is, for other people is that when somebody is in a position that might need be more successful than you, doesn't matter. That's up to you what success is. Um, or just in a position to give you advice, actually listen to what they have to say. Actually, just don't just, oh, they're just an old guy telling me a story. I'm being nice about it, whatever. Just like actually listen and try and soak it in, write it down and try and implement it. And it like, when you do, you'll see that, you know, it, the advice is usually pretty good. I never used to take advice. So I, I wish I could go back and tell myself when I was younger, like, hey, actually take advice. That's the best advice. <laughs> you actually use this. These people that's that have very done it, useful. You know? I think it's excellent. That's a real good answer. Um, so music for Sunday, your debut album was Any Port in the Storm, and it was released in September 23rd of 2008. And you just released like a month ago, Midnight Control by Better Noise Music. That's 15 years of music. What do you think you're bringing to the Ocean City concert? Are you mixing it up? Are you playing your new music? What are you playing at the concert on Sunday? Yeah. I mean, we have an hour set, which is so rad. Like we usually, we don't usually play an hour. We usually play, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. We have a longer set. Um, so the hour set for us, we call it the power hour because we're literally just playing the favorites and that's fun that's really fun for us you know we don't have to it's not that there is filler but there's like there's there's new fans uh, say we play a show and it wasn't oceans call and we had two hours right there's new fans that we want to make happy there's old fans that we want to make happy um we want to make it exciting we want to build a show we want to be entertaining we want to bring you up we want to bring you down uh but when you have a power hour it's like you know we've like said we are on our eighth album we've we've on our on our eighth album we've had a lot of success, uh, a lot of popular songs. And so it was very easy to make this set, you know? So it's just okay. like literally all of our top, all the fan favorites, all the most, you know, just kind of popular songs that we could throw out there. And that's really fun. And 
I, like I said, there, uh, there's no other bands on the bill like us, you know, we're going to be giving you really exciting hip hop songs, really mellow kind of reggae acoustic songs, you know, it's, a, it, we're able to put on a show that's really dynamic, rather than just one note. So I think that's what sets us apart. It's very exciting. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll put this up. We've added you to the OceanCity.com calendar. So people will will be very interested, I think, in, in your performance. And they're, I think they're expecting something close to 50,000 people. So I'm just saying. <laughs> and you're on the big stage. So let's move to your songs. Um, what is your most requested song? I don't know. I, I, I couldn't answer that. I mean, yeah, we've been a band for almost 20 years now, yeah. uh, you know, and like if, if if I'm if I'm going off of social media, it's you know there's it's different from every person. You know we don't sometimes we don't play the old stuff enough. Sometimes we don't play the new stuff enough. So <laughs> at this point in time, um, actually, yeah, I think at this point in time, there's a song called Island Glow off of our new album, and I think that's probably the most requested. And we're gotcha. playing it, and and it's a it's like the band's favorite too. Uh, so that's really fun. So the, is that the one that is the most fun to perform for you? It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's a pirate story. It's the, the song is a story. Uh, and we based all of our production around that on the summer tour that we just did. We kind of did like a broken down, like deconstructed pirate ship. Uh, <laughs> and it's just a song about some pirates. So how do you not like that? That is really cool. And your song Vacation suggests that you love what you do. Um, do you ever get tired of touring and making music? Yeah. 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 Like, uh, there, I mean, we, like I said, I don't want to sound repetitive, but we've been doing it for 20 years. There was a point where I was really, really fried. There was a point where I didn't want to go on tour anymore. Uh, you know, there was a point where, um, you know, it was, it was, there was, I've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows that wasn't necessarily the band or the music or the touring. It was how I was treating my body and my mind. Um, so it was really my fault for doing that. You know, there's a, there's things you could do on the road and you can get into partying and you can, you know, not be nice to your body or your brain or, you know, just have a little bit too much fun. Um, so I don't necessarily think it was the music or the like too much touring. It was just that I wasn't honoring myself and honoring my body and taking care of myself. And now that I've gotten through that and then we had COVID, um, I can tell you right now that taking touring away from me, making me sit at home for two years and not being able to tour was a crazy perspective check. And I could tell you that I have, there's never been a time in my career where I've enjoyed it more than right now. Wow, that's fabulous. Ocean City is lucky. What, do you take vacations? And if you do, where do you go? Yeah, uh, just got back from Kauai um, oh. for a couple months. My family stayed out there. Um, I really like Thailand. We've been there and we feel really safe and at home there. Um, Japan is probably my favorite place I've ever been. And I'm excited to go back there. I could, we could, we could definitely live in Japan for a couple of years. It's that cool. That's really cool. Your song Stand Tall is an important message in today's world. What do you want your fans to take from that song? And what advice would you give someone who needs to stand a little taller? Um, I don't like telling people what my songs are about. I like them, you know, taking that, taking whatever message they can from it. Um, but the, to stand a little taller or to get through something, I really love this one. And, and, and I think this one is, people have probably heard it and it could be a little cliche, but, uh, what is it, what is it? It's, uh, everything will be okay in the end. And if everything's not okay, then it's not the end. That one's my favorite because I, you know, personally, I've had a lot of ups and downs and right. a lot of good times, a lot of bad times. Everything does always get better and it will get better. You just got to, you just got to see it through, you know, you just yeah. got to keep getting up and going. But like it, at, at the lows, it really feels like it's never going to get better. Like nothing's ever going to change and it's going to be like this forever. It, it's not, it will not, it will get better. It will 100% get better. That's so I, I really love message. that. If it, I love it. It's a great message. My mother always used to say this too shall pass. So it's a, it's a really interesting message. Um, your song California Rescue Me resonates with anybody who loves the ocean and has a favorite beach. And Ocean City is a beloved beach to millions of people. Would you consider replacing California with Ocean City for one refrain at Sunday's concert? 
It works. Yeah, the syllable. I'll do the whole thing. The syllable. The syllables totally work. Oh well. Yeah, I can. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> California, Ocean City. I can totally do it. Okay. Cool. We'll well, Maybe well, I'll, Maybe I'll have somebody it. there videoing you. <laughs> and <laughs> the final question. Um, is there anything you want the 50,000 music lovers coming to Ocean City for the Ocean's Calling Festival to know? If you come and you catch us, it will be the best show that you've seen this year or your whole entire life, hands down. And you'll see us again the year after when we go on, on, on tour in the summertime. So catch us. That is fabulous. We'll cut that and put that up on our Facebook page too. So I really appreciate the, uh, the, the um, interview and the time you've given us. And, and we look forward to seeing you in Ocean City. Awesome. See you guys there. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye. Bye.